Can you hear me? Yeah. So this is just uh, an update on something that I'm uh, working on called uh, FN Notify HSM, which stands for Hierarchic Storage Management, um, um, which, act, which practically means um, you can have some files that are not in the file system. For example, they are stored in the cloud. This is the example. And before accessing those files, something, that's the FN Notify uh, listener, will get an up call to a daemon uh, that the file has been accessed. And then this file, uh, the daemon will fill the content of this file from the cloud and release the call uh, for the user to continue um, to access the file. So uh, I, I presented uh, part of this last year. And uh, last year, I presented an issue uh, about uh, uh, locks, uh, lock dependencies that are created when the daemon gets a, a notification about uh, a request to access a file. And then the daemon uh, tries to write data into the file. And in some circumstances, that can create a deadlock. So um, I took some people's advice, and I had some work done uh, to move all the FS Notify hooks outside of um, uh, file start uh, hooks, file start calls. And thank you, everyone, that helped me with that and review. <coughs> and that is now, uh, that went in in uh, 6.8. And I had my branch of patches uh, in GitHub for a while, and some of you have been using it and testing it, and thank you for that as well. And uh, kernel test robot has been testing it as well. Thanks the, co the robot as well, and found some uh, performance regression, specifically because we introduced new hooks, who are in places that they weren't there before, like write. So there's a pre-write hook that did not exist before. Uh, which uh, added some overhead. So I, um, I've made some optimizations uh, to the FS Notify uh, infrastructure uh, to get rid of this overhead. And, and this just went in, uh, in 6.9. And well, the optimizations are, uh, regardless of my, my new hooks, they are also relevant and improve uh, existing code. but. Uh, it was done to facilitate uh, new hooks. Um, yeah, and of course, testing and reviewing the pre-content event. Uh, this is something that happened this year. Uh, so thanks, everyone, who've been testing and reviewing. Um, so things that have been sitting in my branch for a while, but did not, uh, I didn't make much progress yet, is the new events, uh, pre-access, pre-modify. Uh, if you're familiar with FN Notify, if you've seen it before or worked before, uh, the pre-access event is quite similar to the antivirus uh, access perm event, but it has some subtle, subtle uh, differences, and the pre-modify event is a new one. One difference is that uh, we introduced a new information attached to the event about the range, the access range. Um, of course, the purpose is to fill the specific range. So in my POC, uh, which is also on GitHub, uh, you can read a file that's on the web or somewhere. And every read fills uh, the range that you read. So you can read a large file, open a large tarball of the kernel sources. And you don't need to wait the entire file to download in order to continue. Um, there are specific um, issues, actually, that um, Meta and Joseph and people here helped me to find out while testing uh, relating to creating a file, to creating a file, uh, exec and mmap that I'm no, I won't get into. But there are situations like for executing the file that you need to fill the entire range at the beginning at exec v and not while reading specific files of the file. I won't get into it now. Uh, another thing that we added um, in, the, in the branch, in the work in progress branch, is the ability to return a different error. An error different because FN Notify permission events used to only be able to return EPERM, either success or EPERM. 
And with new, these new events, you can now return a few other events, like eBusy, e no space, um, uh, which makes sense for these type of uh, use cases. Um, I have a few open questions for the API. Um, throw it in the room, maybe somebody has an input about it. Uh, so one of the questions uh, that came up was, if I have some files that don't actually contain the data, I want to prevent access to those files unless the daemon is running, unless the daemon can serve uh, the content request. So, and, and those files are really in a real file system. If somebody, if I didn't explain this well, this is a real XFS, BarFS file system with real files that happen to be sparse files, and it's only the responsibility of the daemon to fill them at the right uh, time. So we want to prevent access to uh, certain files unless the daemon is running and listening. Uh, so we were throwing uh, ideas, and one of the ideas we were throwing around was uh, sort of a moderated mount. Think, well, the, the most uh, trivial option was to do a mount option HSM, just the binary mount option HSM, which means that all the FA notify, all the FS notify permission hooks, actually today in the VFS, there is, well, there is a hook. If there is no listener, then obviously the, uh, the return is, is a success. But in this moderated mount, if there is no listener, the return value will be eperm. So that was the concept we were thinking about. And then also when the daemon terminates and then uh, unsubscribes from getting events, the mount be then becomes again uh, default to eperm. So I don't know. If anybody has inputs about this idea, uh, objections, um, While Joseph is making his way to the microphone, I'll just mention that the, the terminology of persistent marks is, I, w I went looking for what other OS does for this specific, because I didn't invent uh, this concept. It exists in Windows for years. And if you have uh, uh, somewhere in your family a Windows uh, system, uh, which uses Google Cloud or uh, OneDrive, then those files actually exist. They are using something called reparse point, which is a persistent mark on an NTFS file system that, that actually contains like a name or a ID of a driver that needs to handle access to this file. So we could have uh, we could do something similar, but um, the approach of moderated mount seemed more simple to me. Uh, so the only reason I don't like the the deny thing, well, at least as far as it goes for mount options, is because like you know for us containers are just like a sub like a subdirectory or whatever, and so like I can't set a different mount option for the like random directory where I'm going to populate my package. You mean containers that use uh, sub volumes? Right. So like that's what like when we. Store our container is just like. But a you snap. can use the bind mount, uh, moderated bind, bind mount for the. Oh, container. I guess if you make it like a a, a mark. Yes. Yeah, that would work. Okay, that I'd be okay with. So I actually like the persistent marks thing. This is the thing that I've been thinking about recently, which is, um, you know, we have the exact problem because I, I can't range fill on access. I have to populate it at open time, right? Which is a big problem for us. And so, like, trying to figure out how to get around that case. Um, I had been thinking about adding, like, an X adder, right, for so us. So, actually, do you know, you, you did try my POC code, right, the HTTP deer code, or didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, So, I have, I actually have two branches, or one that uses the uh, evictable marks as okay. a way to, uh, what I'm doing in my POC is, you don't want to get always uh, hooks, uh, up calls for files. You want to get it on the first time, and then after you're filling the content, you don't want to get hooks again. So what I'm doing is I put a um, uh, FNotify mark on the file, on the entire file system, and then when the first access to a file, 
the daemon examines the file. If the file is, uh, needs to be filled, it fills it. If it's already full, it sets, uh, it's called an evictable mark on the inode. And then all the next uh, access to the file until the inode is evicted uh, do not get the hook. But I have another branch which implements persistent marks. So which, which just like sets a, a persistent ignore mark and not an evictable ignore mark okay. on the file. It's, uh, well, I, so I think that that's good. It, more of my concern is, is figuring out a way to solve the exec thing and allowing me to populate ranges at exec time. And if we have a persistent mark, then we could use that to like get around that particular thing. The problem with exec is that you cannot fill it from outside. Right. <laughs> and you can fill it with ButterFS octals, but... Well, that's the thing, right? Is like, if we have a persistent mark and we have a way to say like, oh, this file is special, let's relax that requirement yeah. and it, allow us to fill it. It was always going to be simpler to deal with these problems per file system. Like DMAPI was inside of XFS and I'm trying to get to something generic, but of course, we can have escape hatches for stuff like exec if, if we need to. Right. But uh, what, what did you do to implement the persistent mark? Uh, well, exadder. Oh, yeah, you did. Uh, basically, I mean, FA notifies a, a bit like an LSM. Right. And there's already a precedent for using exadder for setting a policy. So it's effectively a policy. Uh, an FA notify policy, like security FA notify mark. I love it. Perfect. Uh, I probably have a branch on it. I have a branch on uh, pretty much anything. Okay. But uh, if you want to start looking at it, I'll, I'll look it up and point it to you. Okay. Because there are some Whatever. So. Uh, so, the, so I didn't quite like the persistent marks and exceptors because there it's uh, there are like several open problems with that. Like, for example, who is then responsible for maintaining this? Especially if we, you know, so so you can have like a mark, you know, th this file is special and that's fine. But then imagine if you have like there is not just one HSM provider essentially, yeah. So 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 then like what if like there are two different HSM providers, and that then who owns this flag, you know, and uh, how we kind of decide uh, which f which extended attribute belongs to whom, and somehow map, uh, you know. So so basically you have here marked, you know, I want to get like. You know, this is HSM managed, but now who is managing it? You know, you have to somehow bind this to the FA notify group and so on. So there is like heap of these open questions which were not quite clear to me how we are going to solve. Yeah, and if we're looking at what Mike Windows did, so at the repass point includes an identifier for the engine that needs to deal with it. So it could be worked out that then, then the FA notify listener would need to identify itself with an ID, and then? I mean, I don't think we have to, like, you know, if we're using this mark to just say, this file is populated, essentially, right? I think that it doesn't really matter what the HSM provider, because, like, okay. he's going to do something. So that, do that, something. that is a persistent ignore mark. Yeah. Right. And that was why I did, and I did it because it didn't have that problem, who needs to so, handle it, yeah. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, this is kind of OK. It's a bit ugly to like rummage in like file systems extended attributes from VFS code to like be able to place the ignore market but well so like I've been thinking of like having to deal with this in a variety of different ways and this so far is the least ugly thing like what we want is like a very bit we want the HSM thing because like the fuse thing introduces a whole lot of dependencies I love the idea of fuse but unfortunately like the the practicalities of like dealing with user space possibly crashing and then all of a sudden your service goes down because yeah. the fuse thing crashed when all I really want is to on demand fetch binaries and in this and in some cases on demand fetch portions of binaries because more binary sizes are ridiculous right yeah, yeah. yeah so I was also thinking about like possible solutions for exequy uh, like 
what because here basically it's kind of a security issue to yeah. allow opening file which is execute being executed yeah so uh like what we could perhaps sensibly you know i, I don't have fully the api in mind but i but but i can imagine that some api like you know we would know that these blocks are essentially not yet filled in, so effectively zero, or nobody has was able to access them yet, then we would kind of allow these blocks to be filled in, but not the blocks that have already been filled in. Yeah. So, so, so we could possibly play something like that. I have not yet figured, like, you know, in terms of page cache, it would be basically if it's not yet Mapped or something. But but which API by right? Because then you're violating the deny right. I mean, you need to break that. Right. So that's the that's the problem. Is like I, I I agree. So so basically, we would have to have like a separate syscall for this or something like that. You know, which would which wouldn't require a bright table FD. But yeah, it's all kind of messy. So so I had a, an alternative solution. You're gonna hate this even more. I think. Which is provide in, is it not working? There we go. Sorry, I had an alternative solution for this, um, which is instead of using FA Notify for all this stuff, mm -hmm. is we provide some sort of persistent mark, and we use this persistent mark to indicate that okay, on on access, I know that this file needs to be populated, and I use user mode helper to call out to populate. Yeah, see, <laughs> exactly. I knew you were going to love that even more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm ignoring Christian. Christian can <laughs> scream in the background. Because, <laughs> uh, so, like, at the end of the day, like, we're going to have to poke a hole in here somewhere, right? And if it's if it's another syscall, I think that's also a reasonable, solution, like, probably a lot more palatable solution. Again, I'm ignoring. Christian in the background. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not really sold on any particular solution because I I wouldn't I didn't really see any which, with which I would be really happy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I agree with it would be nice to somehow solve it. And in principle, like it's solvable solution, like it could work. It's just that the way currently we ensure security is not compatible with what we need to do. So, so we need to somehow relax it, and I'm not like 100% sure how, how we can do this in a maintainable way, let's say it. Yes. Maybe Christian has opinion on this, but. Uh, so why do you want to use user mode help? Okay, so the only reason I want to use, I, again, I don't have, a, I'm not tied to anything, but the only reason was because at least with user mode helper, it's like, okay, the kernel is instantiating that, that we're doing something. So that's how we poke the hole. It's like the kernel is saying, I want to instantiate this. I am going to ignore any rights to yeah. this file as far because. Yeah, so essentially the problem is that you have like large executable file and essentially you want to fetch it from the network on demand. Uh, and now, how, how do you do this exactly? So, because currently, like normally, what, what we do is like we generate a notify event. The application, like for example, for no normal read, you know, we generate a notify event. The user space handler opens the file, fills, writes there the content, and then the read resumes and reads the filled in content. But you cannot really do this for execute because the user space is not able to open the file, which is like for writing, which is being executed. Uh, because of e-text. Because of e-text. Yeah, so my question is, my question regarding You can trick it to open the file, but it's it's map private. Like the etext busy thing is not actually the problem. It's like it's not what you said. The etext busy is not the actually uh, the actual problem. The actual problem is that it's mapped private. It's mapped map private, private. So like even if I populated, it wouldn't do anything, right? You so you won't see it. Yeah. yeah, you won't see it. So like, right? So this is why the user mode helper thing. So it's like okay do this and now I know that I have to map it in. The other the other option is that the user mode helper literally takes gets back like we just feed it in the data and it f populates the private mapping with the thing 
and then it also populates the page cache and, and makes it dirty so it gets written back eventually. Does it mean that we have the same problem with shared libraries, although they don't take deny but, right? But is it really the case because the page isn't really mapped yet? Yeah? So, so, so basically we get, a, we would f generate this on a page fault, so, That's it, true. so, so the page is not yet mapped. Yeah, there, there was so an idea to generate the, f uh, the access range uh, yeah, event so, so for so if, page fold. If, if like uh, if Joseph's solution uh, like is like Joseph's solution basically to fill in executable on on demand has to generate on p event on page fold because that's what's going to happen essentially. Yeah. So my main uh, concern with uh, so complaints about uh, user mode helper is I, I reacted the yeah, fact obviously but. Uh, First of all, I, I, if I remember correctly, it's not namespace aware at all. Right. Uh, so uh, this is an issue with, for example, core dumping. All core dumps need to be handled on a, uh, a system D that runs on your on your whole box, and the whole security story of this subsystem is extremely wonky. Uh, and it's essentially an up call, right? Which also is something that is very unpleasant for user space uh, to handle. So that's. It's an API decision that has a lot of implications, uh, in my opinion, also for future extensibility and maintainability. I, I think that, like, I agree, right? And I, th because this is why the F handle thing came up is because I want to use that, right? Um, so obviously for us, we would have this thing outside the container, but like we would want to do it inside the container at some point. I think is. I felt like it might be more palatable than saying with FA notify, we're going to poke the hole for FA notify because I felt like that might be like user mode helper, at least it's being instantiated from the kernel, right? So like we can trust it and like that makes the filling in the executable thing more palatable. But if we're okay with saying like in this, with this pre hook from FA notify, we will allow that access, then that would be okay too, right? I think it's a, it's a, we need to figure out what is the, uh, what's the better usability story and what's the better security uh, story. And that should mainly guide us in my opinion. Okay. I, I mean, like honestly, we already have it working with FA Notify. So like if we could just figure out a way to get this last bit with FA Notify, I mean, I'd be just as thrilled with that. So perhaps the persistent mark to say that this is fillable and then we only allowed it to poke hole if like, you know, we could in the kernel say like, is this mapped to zeros, like unallocated or whatever. In kernel you will know it's not mapped at all, mapped at all you know, and you are now generating the page fault essentially. Well, I so, mean, so it's like call into the file system to make sure there's like not, like we're not just like overriding an existing executable. Like we, yeah. like some dickhead didn't just come Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, so then, then you have to have some, some way to ask, you know, is this really like unfilled? And then, yeah. Which we can do with so FIA map. Right? Which API are you thinking about? Well, is, which API would that be though? Well, FI map. We just call it FI map on the thing and make sure it returns whole. No, no, and then which API would you use to fill the hole? Oh, that then I would just write. But like then you say, like then you allow that to happen. Like you say like when you go to write, so you, I get the event and I go to write and normally we get e-text busy, but we say, well, we have this mark and we have the special mark that says that I'm pre-filling this and I'm now going to go check and make sure that the file system says that there's a hole. We get those two things okay, and we I, say we allow it. I'm not saying it's not secure. I'm saying that you would need to open the file and you got deny rights. So you need to now break a very, very basic VFS uh, constructs to do that. Uh, the counter, deni deny right. Oh, you oh, cannot okay. open a file like I, okay, I regular see. open a file. You cannot. You can use maybe ButterFSI Octal to perform everything that you said, which right, is fine. We could just add a syscall. That yeah, or we could, you could have a syscall doing something like this, yeah. like, like a really, really special syscall for fill, yeah. fill in this hole. Yeah, so it would be essentially right, but kind of special. Yeah. But yeah, I'm. That will at least be somehow workable. Yeah. So 
So I have a couple kind of basic questions thinking about it more, you know, back up a little bit. So in, I mean, Windows isn't perfect, Apple isn't perfect, but they use this all the time, right? They use HSM all the time. And one of the things that's really important is you have to identify which files, you know, are, because it could take a long time, like the, the act of what you're describing could take minutes to populate. Right. Um, actually, and actually, I didn't study if Windows can do it, um, like, uh, gradually, if Windows does not have to populate everything at the beginning, I'm not sure. Well, I, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't count on it anyway. I, I think it, it can be done different ways. But I, one thing I noticed, and it showed up at the startup I was at years ago, um, that Apple, for example, when Apple mounts, um, or actually locally, if, if you just open a, a, the desktop manager or the file manager, and I think it's probably the same in Windows, it looks to see if it's an HSM type thing, First of all, to see if the metadata is offline, and second, if the data is offline. Because if the data is offline, it doesn't care how much, right? If it just if it's marked that way, they have an attribute flag for this, right? Windows has an attribute flag for, yeah, you know, data is offline, whatever. It it knows, okay, this could be really slow what you're doing, so I'm just gonna do the minimal populating of my file manager, and I'll let whatever the file system do in the background. But I'm not gonna slow. I'm not gonna wait three or four minutes for you to do whatever you're doing. And so one of the things we talked about two or three years ago was, you know, just a simple statx attribute flag so we know apps can know not to wait three minutes or five minutes for your thing to populate. Um, the second thing that worried me a little bit about security is that in the NTFS example, reparse points, they had a flag, I think, right? Open reparse point. So if you wanted to manipulate these X adders, which are not X adders, they're, they're reparse data, but if you wanted to manipulate that, you had that permission to be able to do open reparse point. So by default, if you open the thing, it's just going to go do whatever. And it, it looks like a normal file. Or, but if you don't, um, you know, it's an empty directory you can't access. Uh, it, this is just a special file. But the point is that open reparse point was a flag that let you get at the, the special stuff you don't want the user to see. Um, these weird things you're talking about that you don't want the user to see. Because otherwise, it just looks like a normal file. And I don't know how we do that. You know, X adders may be fine. I don't, I don't care. But well, security X adders is how it's done for LSM, so. Yeah, so I mean, maybe there's some, you know, SE Linux-like thing where you have a, a type of adder that's only accessible if you have, you know, some Apple permission for, for accessing this HSM stuff. But there was a special flag in the Windows example, and so that kind of fits more with the new syscall kind of idea. And Apple, it's a big deal for Apple, too. It's not just Windows. Yeah, I have a last slide just saying that, <laughs> and Joseph has also said that anything that can be done with SF and Notify can be done with Fuse. Fuse is much more flexible, that, but then you have to pass through everything, and this is where Fuse pass through, pass through comes in, and this is why I've been working on Fuse pass through. So this is the other way around, taking Fuse and making it a little bit more palatable for this use case. And I also have follow-up patches to do more. So if you were going to work on it or wanted to test it them, uh, talk so to I, me. Talk to me. I'm still going back and forth about what I want to do, I think, right now. I have, I told you, I have money on both horses right, still. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm working on both things no matter what. Yeah. But like, whether or not for this particular use case, I like go Fuse or, or FA Notify, I'm still up in the air. But I think I'm leaning more FA Notify right now for this. So just so that people know, um, Dan Rosenberg gave a presentation, I think it was at a mini conf at uh, Plumbers in Dublin last year. Uh, if you do a Google search for Fuse-BPF, uh, this is something that he was implementing um, for Android. And it was specifically so that you could do dynamic incremental download of executables. Um, and he was going to be implementing uh, Merkle trees and uh, compression, you know, in an external binary. So there's actually some other work happening in this space. I just thought. Yeah, I'd I, it. I forgot to mention it, but yeah, Fuse Pass Through is has just has just been merged to 6.09. It is part of the patch set uh, originating from from Android. Yep. Parts of it are well, a lot has changed, but it was just taking the small part of read write pass through. Nothing about BPF. And this is also what Miklos has requested from Daniel. Let's do the pass-through first. Get the fuse internal. What? 
<laughs> get the fuse internals done and working and tested and then introduce BPF on top of that. And Daniel has, uh, he's just posted something or is gonna post, but anyway, um, I, I'm, not wor I'm now working on the pass-through infrastructure and I trust that they will come in with BPF later if they will follow up. Yeah, I, you know, the, the Android case, like it makes sense for them to run a fuse file system. For us, it is a problematic just because, you know, it, we're talking about like on the phone, it's a little bit easier for, in production, right? Like if the fuse file system crashes, suddenly you lose access to the application and the whole application crashes. Like the FA notify thing solves this because it's like, it's one shot, right? Like I, I populate it and then I get out of the way and then like the data is just there. Right, it's just there, and that's and that's all we care about. Like to, to have to like have the maintenance of the, fu the file. It's system. A, for mostly pass through file system. That's why I started the FE notify right. thing. It's it's much better if if we can get it to work. Oh, yeah, that's that's the trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, if anybody wants to do a lightning talk. We don't need to do a lightning talk at the plenary. We can do our own lightning talk here. It makes more sense. But I don't know if anybody has anything. Now it's break. Now it's break. And after that, we either come back here if somebody wants to talk or? I think I'm, let me and Christian are up at 4.30. And then. Oh, so I have my schedule confused. I'm done from the, for the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Sorry about that. So even better. Now we have more time to think if you have uh, uh, lightning topics for uh, the end of the day. And we better do it here, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, first there are some talks here. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah, we have an interesting session actually now. Joseph's session and uh, Leah and uh, Luis.